more vetoes from Governor Phil Scott. Thank you for joining us. I'm Darren Perrin. And I'm Kat Villianzoni. This time on bills addressing housing and conservation and another seeking to limit what kinds of data can be shared. Channel 3 political reporter Calvin Cutler joins us live in the studio. Calvin, these vetoes just about an hour ago. What have you learned about the governor's concerns? Let's start with Act 250 reform. Yeah, that's right. Good evening, Darren and Cap. The governor says essentially that the bill doesn't do enough to tackle our housing crisis right now. Now, this bill creates a multi-tiered system for areas of the state where Act 250 would apply to development projects. The aim is to build more in developed areas with existing water and sewer infrastructure, and it would make it more difficult to build in areas with natural resources like forests, wetlands, streams, and more. Governor Phil Scott vetoed the bill, saying that it does not address the housing shortage. But Governor Scott says there is a path forward to passing a bill next week and working with lawmakers. He says he and his team have a bill in hand, which includes more exemptions for housing projects and development that lawmakers could pass next week during the veto session. And Calvin, Governor Phil Scott has also vetoed a bill aiming to protect Vermonters data online. What are we talking about here? Yeah, Kat, so our personal data collected online from our personal devices is collected and sold to advertisers who use that to target specific ads our way. Now, it's really how most of the websites and social media apps that we use are funded. But the data privacy bill would put greater restrictions on how businesses and companies can buy and sell your data online. The bill takes aim at companies accessing, storing, and deleting your personal data. It's a paradigm shift to a world in which consumers' data belongs to consumers and not to the businesses that hold that data. The data privacy bill would put restrictions on what kinds of data can be bought and sold, protections on your age, race, fingerprints, social security number, and more. And it will put restrictions on businesses who are determined to have misused Vermonters' data. And it's also just saying to companies, you know, it's, it's our data and they're making money off of it. So it's our data. We get to decide what we're going to do with our data. Megan Sullivan with the Vermont Chamber of Commerce says they also support the responsible use of Vermonters' data. But they say this bill is too strict and will be too costly for businesses to comply with. Vermonters absolutely have uh, need to have the right to say when and where they want um, their data be used, but we need to do this in a way that complies with what other states are doing to make a solution that's easy for businesses to adopt, that protects consumers and holds our bad actors accountable. The bill also includes provisions to allow the Attorney General and individual Vermonters to sue companies who misuse data. But that has some, including Governor Phil Scott, concerned about potential nuanced lawsuits against Vermont companies. The bill also includes protections for teens online and takes aim at companies who use algorithms to make social media addictive. The kids code portion, it's unfortunate that it got brought into the bill because that's a good, one of the good pieces as well. Um, but um, the small businesses are very, very concerned about this, Vermont businesses. Now, following the vetoes this afternoon, House Speaker Jill Krowinski said she was disappointed. She says the Act 250 bill was a balanced approach to both housing and conservation, while also adding that the data privacy bill was aimed at protecting Vermonters' security and dignity. She says the House will attempt to override both vetoes next week. Live in studio, Calvin Cutler, Channel 3 News. Calvin, thank